Hello YouTube, this is Jonathan, KM4CFT, um, and today I'm going to be um, working on something, a bit of a project, and I thought that as I do this project, I thought I'd um, document my progress as I do this. Um, what I'm planning on building is going to be pretty ambitious. I'm planning on designing my own um, QRP um, CW transceiver, and the first major set step of this project is going to be um, a crystal filter and so a uh, little background here um, you're going to you, uh, the older transceiver designs and designs like the uh, mountain topper series and also the SW3B by Venus technology um, but use what is use um, a technology called super heterodyne which is where you uh, we have a CW signal and we want to uh, take that CW signal, move it into a, in, use a mixer to transfer that frequency into an intermediate frequency. Then we take the intermediate frequency and transfer it down to baseband. So um, typically what you'll do is you'll have what's called a crystal ladder filter or a cone filter. And I actually, I'll grab a uh, schematic so we can take a look real quick. So as you can see, there is a series of crystals in series with capacitors shunting to the ground and capacitors the input and output. Uh, the reason why we this this version of technology is not is becoming less and less popular and it's being coming in favor of software defined radio technology. The main reason I think of it is because of this filter, and the reason why is because there traditionally you would get yourself um, a major transceiver. People would get themselves a mechanical filters, but mechanical filters are obscenely expensive. They're like a hundred something dollars for just one of them. So these these ones you use um just regular old crystals, uh, you know, just regular old uh, crystals. Um, but the problem is is that they are not is that you have to match them to get them to work. And so the first step I'm going to do is I'm going to match them, um, and. So what I've done is I've set up, I've got my nano VNA and I've calibrated it so that it will show me this. Um, and I've got the uh, through, through measurement and I've got this little jig that I built up. It lets me stick the crystal in there and it'll show me the parameters. Um, and I've got S21. And S21 is insertion loss basically. Um, and when you look at a piece, when you look at um, something on a graph, so you have your frequency, and you have your amplitude. What you'll see is something that looks like this. So this is the frequency. This is the S21 parameters of a uh, of your uh, of your crystal. So there's two frequencies. Uh, we have our series frequency and our resonance frequency. Uh, the thing is, is that um, when you want to, you want these, you want this fil this this point to be, uh, you want your frequency to be uh, relatively close. Um, my filter, I want to do a um, about a three hundred to five hundred hertz filter. And according to some articles I've read, most of them by Wes Hayward, um, who who's written most of the uh, books on on this topic um, and on transceiver design in general. Um, you want it to be ten percent of that bandwidth. So I want. So if I'm doing five hundred hertz, I need these to be within. 50, I need these to be um, within fifty hertz of each other. Um, and if you've seen crystals, they typically got a some kind of frequency measurement on them. Uh, that frequency value isn't going to. It doesn't tell you exactly. They're, they're not exact. It's actually giving you a frequency somewhere right here, and that's the reason why is because you're usually using it in a uh, oscillator for a um, or clock system like a microcontroller and you're taking advantage of the slope here to uh, create that oscillation and um, it's not that it doesn't need to be that precise uh, whereas this you do need to be so precise so what I'm going to be doing is I've set this fixture up and I've put these lines here and I'm gonna go through I've got a hundred or so crystals I'm gonna be going through each one putting on the nano VNA seeing what frequency is the frequency of resonance and then sorting them by um, frequency of resonance. And then I'll choose um, four or so that are within closest. 
Um, and after that, what I'm going to do is I am going to take my, um, I'm going to take four of them and I'm going to do a little bit more precise measurement. Uh, and the technique I'm going to be using, I'll, I'll go ahead and point you to W2AEW's um, YouTube channel. He's got a video explaining how he does it, how he's going to be doing the, uh, how, he, how you can find emotional parameters of a crystal. Um, and watch that video if you want to see how, what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be using his techniques for the nano DNA. Um, I did actually have myself a uh, G3UUR circuit, which is just a simple Colpitz oscillator with a um, capacitor in series that can be shunted to ground um, if you to bypass it, and you you can do that um, and get the frequency. The problem is is that I don't have an accurate enough frequency counter for that to work. I uh, tried using my oscilloscope, and um, it was only showing me. Um, it was showing me in kilohertz markings, and I, I need um within hertz markings. So I've got this, I've got this one zoomed in so I can show it close enough, and uh, that sh it should be good enough. I don't need it to be perfect, but the the more precise, the better. Um, and if you do the um G three U R method, then um what you can do is you can get a hold of a piece of software called the uh, Dishal. Um. It's found on, um, you can find a download to it um, within the QEX archives of, on the ARRL. Um, and um, I'll, when I post the video, um, I'll, I'll put a little subtitle of which article. I think it was, um, it was either June or July of 2009, I think is the QEX article that shows it. Um, if you look on, if you do a simple Google search and look up crystal ladder filters for all, um, there, it should point you, it should have, at the end of the article, it points you towards, uh, what article, where to find the software. And this software, what you can do is you can find, is you can enter the emotional parameters into this. And the way, what you, what I would do is I take four of them, find out the emotional parameters and average them. And what I'll do is I'll spit out the, um, capacitor values that I need for my uh, filter, given that the bandwidth that I want. Um, and if you're doing the G3UUR technique, let me find it, then you can, you can go over to that and it pops up with this and you can just simply enter the information here and it'll spit out the answer for you. Um, but that relies on having an accurate frequency counter, which I do not have, or a frequency counter we're capable of doing within Hertz. Uh, and yeah, that should um, be good. So I'm going to, uh, let's, I'll just show you what I'm doing. Apologies for being all over the place, but we're learning together. But when I plug in my crystal, I got my crystal plugged in there. You can see that it will peak. So this one has a series resonant frequency of 4.914.570. Oh. So um, I'll do that, and I'll use this to find it, and once we do, I'll, I'll be back, and I'll show you what I got. Okay, so I've gotten, I went through and sorted them. You can see um, what they are. These are the um, Hertz section. So uh, they were all 4.914 4, 4 megahertz, or 4,914 kilohertz, and these are the Hertz markings. Um, so these are 10 Hertz increments and you can see, you can see how it, when you take a large number of them, how, how you have like a large number and they kind of spread out here. So they seem to be, um, around the, um, 600 Hertz area. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm probably going, I'll count and see which ones have the most. It might be, it's either 600 or 610. And then I'm going to go in and I'm going to go even more precise with my nano VNA. And then pick four of, I'm gonna um, kind of try to spread them out even more. And um, then pick four of them and uh, go from there. And then we'll, we'll see what happens um, when I build my test filter. Um, or more specifically, I'll be um, taking that information and then calculating the motional parameters of them. All right, so I went through and did another round with just the um, 610 series. 
Um, you can see um, they were all pretty close. Uh, th th these are close enough where I can work with them. Um, so I'll probably just take these four right here and call it good. So there's my four crystals I'm going to use for my four pole ladder filter. Uh, now I'm going to go through and do some math and use uh, W2AEW's video to uh, figure out what those crystal parameters are. And I'll be back when I do that. Okay, so I have um, went through and I did, did the um, measurements with my crystals. So what I did is I um, so put a little tally marks on the crystals, one through four, and went through and calculated the holding capacitance. Well, the capacitance was really simple. Um, where is it? Yeah, so I, I have this capacitance meter here. Um, and I just use that to measure the holding capacitance. I found that's within ten, that gets it pretty much within the tenth of a picofarad, which is good enough for me. Um, and they were all the same, 1.9 picofarads. Um, and then I just, um, I measured the... C the uh, the whole the resistance motional parameter um, that's just s s two one parameter um, at the um, series resonance. Um, you can also use the um, phase of the uh, phase method. If you use the, if you use phase, then it's zero degrees at that point, and then you just plug in this formula, and then I average them to get that value um, to get to find out the um, Motional inductance and motional capacitance. Um, I use the phase shift method, which is where you look at the frequency at plus 45 degrees and minus 45 degrees. These are backwards, but um, the lower one was plus 45 and the higher one was minus 45. Uh, but uh, yeah, I do that and I plug in the calculations and got these values. Um, and then what I did is I took those values and I went over to shell and plugged everything in. So plugged in the mill the emotional inductance, the series frequency, the holder capacitance, uh, left left the um, ripple as default, and then put it as four crystals, and then set the bandwidth to um, kilohertz and you can play around with that bandwidth to see what those values are and if we look we have ck12 and 23 and they're about 100 picofarad which is what i was expecting and that's for a 350 hertz um filter so what i'm probably going to do is i'm going to just um do a uh uh i'm going to do a uh filter that's um 100 picofarads but essentially, if we were to um, look at it, we have we have one, two, three, we have four crystals in series. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. So. What it's saying is that we have two, three. So what it's saying is we have and then it's saying that these two are the 91.7. And normally you also have capacitors and series out here, but that's that's what it's telling me for this filter. And what I can do is I'm gonna do 100 picofarads and just see what happens. And just see if that is. Um, the next, um, once I do build that, um, what what I'm going to be doing is I'll be taking a uh, filter with, I'll be adding a, uh, res be trying to figure out what the um, impedance matching will be. And what you do is you add a, um, So 
So you add a potentiometer between 100 and 200. I'm going to probably do a 200 ohm potentiometer. And what you do is you hook up your, um, you hook up stuff to here and here. And you will, and what you do is you adjust this potentiometer such that you get the best response. And then what you do is you remove, what you'll do is you'll remove that potentiometer and measure the resistance from here to here. And that resistance is the impedance that needs, is the matching impedance it wants to see here and here. And then you simply make it so that your transformer is like that. Something that I've been noticing when I look at all the um, super heterodyne designs I see is that they don't have those. So this will just be just for practice, but um, I'm pretty sure in my final design, I don't need to worry about that. Um, we'll see what happens. It probably isn't that big of a deal because it just affects ripple. But yeah, that, that should be pretty good. And yeah. I put together the um, circuit board uh, and uh, these are all 100 picofarad and I actually realized on the software that Deshaul actually gives you the series um, resistance um, and it turns out it was about 250 ohms was the uh, resistance it was giving me so uh, that's a uh, I found that calculated that turns ratio is about 2.236 to 1, and then you just multiply that um, and find whenever you get close to a whole number. And so I got about 9 to 4 was was the turns ratio. And it looks something like that. And so when I plug it in, this is, this is the filter response I'm getting. Um, note that's probably not perfect because I haven't calibrated it or anything. Calibrated the um, meter with these leads on it. And... Not perfect, but uh, it looks wide in this picture, but that's because I have it zoomed in. Actually, it's about 360 hertz, with which so the center of it's about here. It's a bit of ripple there, but so about five and a half dB. So um. With this, I can assume about 6 dB of loss is what I'll do in my calculations when I go and handle the rest of it. And the filter doesn't need to be perfect. There can be some attenuation on the high end or on the low end. It doesn't need to be perfect. Uh, but yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, so I think that I'll um, end the video here on um, the uh, crystal filter. And then as I design other portions of this, I will update you guys. So thanks for watching.